Hi everybody, it's Nicolas Dorier and today I'm going to explain you everything you need to know about the concept of XPUB, HD key, or also sometimes you hear about BIP32 wallets, uh, as well as the pitfall you might encounter. So I will explain you also the history, like how we got where we are today. Uh, and first, most users actually in Bitcoin don't really need to know what is a XPUB. Uh, you, you, if you use Bitcoin via a single wallet software, for both spending and receiving, then there is not too much point to know to know anything of it. But however, like if you are in a more professional settings, uh, you will probably need a different software for spending versus receiving uh, your bitcoins. So a typical example is a merchant who want to generate new bitcoin address for uh, each of his invoices that he's sending to the customer, and uh, this merchant might want to use a different software for sending the payments uh, that is more comfortable with or that has more uh, features that he, he will want otherwise. Uh, there is also, for example, an exchange. Uh, if you are an exchange, you want the ability to receive funds easily. You want to, the ability to be able to generate new addresses easily, but uh, spending the money should be hard and have strict strict access uh, physical protocol to ensure the safety of the funds. So in both cases, basically, you, you have uh, two different software, one for receiving, one for sending. Uh, they both use the same wallet, but they are two different software. And if you are in this situation, then you need to know what is an XPUB and you need to know what we are talking about. So that's, how, that's what I will explain you today. So first, if you wanted to create a new wallet software, uh, the most naive way of doing so will be to generate one key for one address for your user. So the user will just re always reuse the same address and would only need to back up the private key. But there is two problems with this approach. Well, the first one is privacy. The user is sharing how much Bitcoin he receives and spends to anybody knowing his address. And the second, is a prob the second problem is technical. If the user, for example, is a merchant and generated five different invoices uh, sharing the same address, when he receives such a payment, how would he know which invoices it is paying for? So you might be tempted instead to generate a new key for your user every time you need it. The problem with this is that then the user will need to back up the new key every time he wants to uh, receive funds. So Bitcoin Core tried to solve uh, this problem long time ago uh, by pre-generating a bunch of keys in advance, for example, 100 keys. And the user will only need to back up once in a while. When most of the private, uh, when most of the pre-generated keys are used, then Bitcoin Core will just regenerate a new batch of 100 keys. But then the problem is that the user will always have to think uh, to back up the set of uh, pre-generated key every time, and most users don't. To solve this problem with backups, uh, BIP39 and BIP32 was created. So instead of giving the responsibility to the user to back up his keys once in a while, instead we ask the user to save a mnemonic phrase. The user can optionally add a password to it. From this mnemonic and password, you will be able to generate lots of keys. Each of those keys are called HD key, HD like hierarchical deterministic. And the first key in this hierarchy is often referred to as the master key or extended master key. While the master key is able to generate any private key in the wallet, you can remove the private key components and only keep the public components. This gives you what we call an XPUB. Somebody with the XPUB uh, will be able to see half of the public keys down the hierarchy and none of the private keys. If you do not neutralize the master key, you have what we call an XPRIV. Somebody knowing the master XPRIV can derive all public keys and private keys of your wallets. The downside of this approach is that 
the tree can be pretty big. So there is 256 level in this tree and each HD key can generate up to 2 to the power of 32 keys. If I was storing that on my drive, it would probably take terabyte of memory. So Bitcoin applications takes assumptions how you create addresses for your wallets. Those assumptions are sometimes conflicting between different applications. So the one I present you now is the most popular. For a P2WPKH wallet, the path taken in the here called tree is 84 prime, zero prime, zero prime. So don't be disturbed by the primes. Uh, the only thing that you need to know about it is that the parent XPUB can generate them. So for example, if you had the XPUB at 84 prime, you will not be able to generate zero prime. Uh, a given XPUB can only generate half of its children XPUB. So 84 prime, zero prime, zero prime is often referred as the account XPUB. And this is in general what you need to share between different applications to generate the same addresses. Uh, then the zero of one or one uh, denotes uh, whether you, are, you share a deposit key or a change key. Then you have the key index. The key index, it's uh, the index that Bitcoin applications will increment every time it needs a new fresh address. It means the Bitcoin applications will only monitor those two lines of pub keys. So the deposit line and the, and the change line. Uh, but even only with two lines, uh, that will take terabytes to store in a database. So wallets uh, are typically looking for blockchain activity for specific fixed number of keys. So we call this number uh, the gap limit. And in general, it is 20 by default. Uh, if the application detects that the specific pub keys has been used on the blockchain, then it will try to maintain this gap limit by listening the next 20 addresses after the last one that has been used. The problem is that if two applications share the same wallets and one application generated more than 20 addresses without having received anything on them, then one of the applications will fail to detect this payment. The only mitigation to this problem used by applications nowadays is to increase the gap limit to make sure no payments are missed. Um, now let's get some practice. Uh, here is a screen of Wasabi Wallet. And as you can see, it asks you the optional password when creating a wallet. Here, here is the, the word list. And when you go to the wallet information, you can find all the information that we talked about and more. The extended uh, master fingerprint is just a hash of the master XPUB. This is checked uh, to make sure that you entered the right password or in the case of the hardware wallet that you are using the right uh, device. Uh, ZPRIV and ZPUB include the same information as XPRIV and XPUB. However, it's, it is used to sign signal to some other application that P2, P2WPKH addresses should be generated from the public keys. Uh, as you can see, Wasabi Wallet requires a password to show the XPRIV, and it's a common security practice in the Bitcoin world. Like the XPUBs are kept un unencrypted so that Bitcoin application can generate addresses. However, the XPRIV requires the password so that even if your computer is stolen, then the robber will not only be able to see your transaction, but unable to spend any of your money. When you generate a new address with the wallet, you can see the key path to this address. In Electrum, when you create a new wallet and go to the wallet information, you can see that contrary to Wasabi wallet, it is not really using the same uh, key path. It's not using 84 prime, zero prime, zero prime for the account key, but it's using zero prime. Uh, this is a small annoyance that we have with the uh, HD wallets, where every wallet is doing slightly different uh, different things, but that are almost the same, but incompatible with each other. So if you are not enough confused yet, um, when you restore a wallet in Electrum, it is asking to use a master key. But 
Electrum actually wants an account key, not a master key. Electrum will use the account key that you entered and derive the path the zero, zero something or one something for deposit or change addresses. So if you enter, enter here the uh, zip up you get from Wasabi Wallet, you can start using the same wallet as the one you use in Wasabi Wallet, but through Electrum. So two app, you, at the end of the day, you will have two applications using the same wallet. This is what I wanted to show you for today. The gap limit problem is uh, one of the biggest user experience hurdles in Bitcoin. And I hope that now you understand what it is about. Uh, please, while you may know what an XPUB is now, please avoid copy pasting those between different servers because just sharing an, an account XPUB is sometimes missing some vital information like the, fin the wallet fingerprint that is sometimes needed for some scenario involving air gap signing. Please subscribe for the next videos. My next video will be more developer oriented and show you how you use uh, the concept you just learned in a more prog programmatic way.